All right. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about data structures in Anytime. I know this is a bit more technical topic, but I'm going to try my best to explain and go through a bit slowly and try to cover everything so that you understand how the data structure in Anytime works, how, what, when you might need to, you know, uh, use a, the function node to transform data from one structure to another. So let's get started and take uh, an overview of how it looks. So this is whenever you make a request via HTTP, uh, via the HTTP request node, or uh, you are getting some data from another API. This is the top level structure that uh, looks uh, that you will get. So let's just break it down into small parts. So first of all, if you see there is a orange box that is called items. So that's uh, that's the whole array that uh, Max showed us earlier, right? And each, and in this particular items box, we have smaller boxes, which are each individual item, right? I am gonna go through an example to show you the difference over here, but yeah, but so moving forward, now each of this item can have a box within itself, which can which contains the value JSON, and now each JSON can have another box within itself, which contains different values. So these values can be your actual data. So something like, you know, the order ID, the name of the particular order, the price and everything like that. So moving forward. So this is how the overall uh, your data might look like. So again, there is a box, which is an items. And each of this box contains uh, different boxes, which, have, which, which, which we call as JSON objects. And then in this JSON objects, there are another boxes which actually contain your data. So over here, you can see that our actual data is the name, the age, and the role. So this is how the overall structure looks like in any 10. Now moving forward over here, I this is a screenshot of one of the nodes. So if you execute the node, you get a list of items in here. Now if you see, we have uh, on the nodes, we specify the total number of items that get returned. And each of this row is an individual item. So you can see that the total number of items here is five and each of these rows is an individual item. Now let's take a look at how it actually looks under the hood in any time. So for this, I have taken an example of the function node because we oftentimes uh, use the function node for data transformation. So the important thing to note over here is that you can see that there is the JSON key for each and every item in here. Now this is the actual code that you write, but this is the value that any 10 displays you. So any 10 does not show you the JSON key. It only gives you the uh, required data. So sometimes uh, I have seen a lot of users get confused. Some, uh, uh, and this is why I wanted to you know, specify this particular thing that we, uh, we don't extract uh, the JSON object. We don't display it to you, but it under the hood, this is how it looks like. So again, coming back to and taking a full picture over here, we have an items box, which contains individual smaller boxes, which are JSON objects. And this JSON objects, they contain your actual data. So this data can have, you know, any kind of structure. It can be another object or it can be an array. So now let's take a look at it. Again, I'm gonna uh, steal Max's example over here and I'm gonna go through the same example. So I'm gonna execute the node and it is gonna return the same data that Max uh, showed us. But over here, if you see, it says only one item, but we have a lot of different orders in here. Now this is because if I close this, we have the main uh, array, sorry, the main box, which was uh, in the orange, the orange box and then this is the and there is just one single box in here so the orange box and there's just one box and that is why for any 10 this is only one uh, item but if we split it into items and if i execute this now what it will do is it will now uh, get those items from that uh, from the inner item box and then it give us the json body so if you see over here now we have the items as 30 and now we have each of these individual items so this was the items and why you should care about it so one of the reasons is oftentimes we get all these values and we want to you know 
uh, do some uh, process on each of these values. But if you don't have the values coming in as this uh, as the unattended data structure, only the first item in that value gets processed, and you then you know have to you maybe loop around it and figure out a way of how you can process this uh, all the items. So if you convert your incoming request into the unattended data structure, you don't have to create any sort of loop. So unattended then handles it for you. So let's take a quick look over here. So I'm just going to use the set node for now. And I'm going to set a value over here. Let's just get the employee name, right? Now, another important thing to note over here is we just show the first value over here, but we are going to process all the uh, incoming data. So if I execute this node, you see that we have we are getting the value for all the incoming data and not only just the first item. Now this is again because we are following the unattended data structure. But what happens when we don't do that? So let's turn this off, execute the node. Now remember we are now just getting only one item. So I have to go ahead and change the expression in here. So you see now that are like each of this becomes an array and we are only able to specify one particular value. So now if I execute this node, it only gives me the first value. So this is where you really, uh, this is where uh, transforming your data into the uh, into the data structure that and then follow is really helpful when you, uh, when you want to process all the information for each of these incoming uh, items. So since we are talking about transformation, let's take a look at how you can do it. So uh, to access the data, the, we since Anytime uses JavaScript under the hood, we are using JavaScript. Uh, you, yeah, we are using JavaScript notations to access the data. So again, items is the whole box. So we are telling, hey, we need something from the items. Okay, cool. But what do you need now? So we need the first value from the items. So if you are familiar with uh, arrays in JavaScript, the first value always is indexed with zero. So because I want the first object, I am telling I want the first object uh, from, from items. And then what exactly do I want? So I want this particular JSON object. And that's why I then specify dot JSON. So what this will return is this will return the whole uh, JSON object, which is the name, the age, and the role. But if I want to, uh, let's just say, get the second item, right? So over then I have to specify items and then change the index value over here, and then I can get JSON. What happens when we want to, you know, get a specific value? Let's just say that's the name. So in that case, what we do is we just, you know, after JSON, we again use a dot notation. So this becomes dot JSON dot name. So now it will only return us the name and it won't give us the age and the role. So now let's take a look at how it looks like at that from a third party API and how it looks like in any 10. So whenever you make a request uh, on the third party or for the third party API, uh, uh, maybe using a tool like Postman, right? You might get the data in this format. But for any 10, this is how it looks under the hood, right? And if you see over here, we have the results array and we want to just get the results, right? We just don't, we don't want the count or the errors. We want the actual results so that we can process it further. So for that, what we do is we use the uh, map function of JavaScript to speci uh, and extract those values. So what will happen over here is it will go through the results array, map through those values and give you only this particular object. And then you can connect another node and then process all that information. Moving forward to the next example, sometimes you might want to combine all these values together. And this is where uh, this example is really useful to understand. So let's just say we now have different values in here, right? We have a JSON object which contains name, John, a JSON object which contains a name, Mary. And now we want to combine them and get it into one a single object, JSON object. So that's where this kind of code snippet is really helpful. So what it does is it goes through all these items 
and it gets those values and it then uh, uses the join operation to join them. So this is how it would look like. So in the end, my message would be uh, John, Mary, and someone whose name starts with P, right? So something like that. So this was a small overview of uh, data structure in any time. If you have any questions, I would love to address them. So feel free to uh, post your questions in the chat. And I just to take a quick summary of what we talked about. So we talked about that if you if uh, if your incoming data is following the data structure of any time, your data will travel from node to node and it's called items. And inside the list, each item contains an object. We saw the inner box that has the JSON. And inside the object, again, it is the key JSON. And sometimes if you're working with files, the key might change from JSON to binary. And if you want to transform your data, there are essentially three steps that you should take care of is to first recognize, which is the incoming data structure. So is it just an array within an array or is it just, uh, is it uh, an array that contains all those JSON? items the next is to extract with you know uh, with the expressions so something like item zero dot json and then that particular value and the last is to return it into the compliant uh, data structure using the javascript methods that i uh, that i talked about earlier we already have a code snippet documented which contains all the most common code snippets that you might have you uh, that you might need so you can always head over to our documentation and it's in, uh, under the reference section and again if you have if you're facing any kind of problem or if you have more questions around uh, transforming your data you can always ask us the questions on our community forum